In this video I'm going to show you how you go from this, which is a basic shape that I made out of Play-Doh, uh, to this, which is a finished lime wood head with moving jaw and moving eyes. Uh, the video should be of particular interest to anybody who's thinking about buying a CNC uh, routing machine. Uh, and in the video I'll uh, first of all show you the physical aspects of it, uh, the machine work and the hand work. And following that I'll show you my software um, workflow and the software that I use. This is a lump of uh, lime wood which I'm going to use to make the head. Um, it's important to select it. Quite often it has grey uh, streaks in it or uh, lines through it. This piece seems nice and uh, clean so First of all, we want to saw the length, a chunk off this end. Okay, now I've got it's 50, about 53 millimetres and I want 52, so I need to plane it down. Normally I would use a planer thicknesser, but uh, for the big planer thickness I have it's too short. And for the smaller one, the Proxon one I have, it'll only go to 40 millimetres, so it's too tall. So I'm going to have to use just an ordinary planer and carefully take each side down. So let's give that a go. Now we've got to decide which router to use. Um, this is the biggest or the biggest area one I've got, a high 720 T, a T for the uh, ball runs here. This has a uh, one kilowatt router on it, which is uh, really too much because this project's going to run for a few hours. You don't need a kilowatt to drive a, a, a small bit. Uh, so we won't use that one. I only use this one really just for cutting uh, big sheets of uh, plywood out. The second choice is another highs. Uh, this one's got a uh, three-phase spindle on it. I think it's uh, 300 watts. So the other one was a kilowatt. This one's 300 watts. This would do it very nicely. They both do it, but again, 300 watts is quite a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I have uh, uh, some uh, profiling machines which are a lower wattage. A couple of um, Roland MDX40As, which are profiling machines. These, the motors, are only 100 watts. Uh, which is quite adequate. I mean, at the moment I'm going to be using a 6mm bit, but I'm going to finish it with a 3mm ball, uh, ball mill. And that's fine. That's all you need to drive uh, this. It takes a while, but you don't want to blast through the wood anyway, because we want a nice finish. And with only 100 watts, perhaps another 100 watts for all the mo other motors attached, you've got 200 watts. So you're not using much power at all. And... Uh, you just leave it running so the time is not such a factor it's not as though i'm trying to make 10 of these a day what i want is a nice consistent high quality project product okay right we've got the block of wood in the uh, in the roland uh, profiling machine now i put the rough cut six mil bit on the uh, motor so first of all we want to center it now. <laughs> Put move to center. That's why origin move. Okay, now it's centered on the Y, and we need to now center it on the X, which I think that's about right. Top up again. Put it 
down. Let's go a little bit more slowly. That's it. So now we put set apply here. Now we want to get the Z, which let's put the top up for this. Using a uh, Rizla cigarette paper, which is very thin. And we'll go a tenth of a millimetre at a time. There we are. And we'll set the final check on everything. Yep. Good. Spindle spinning. Good, there's one side done. Let's just vacuum it off. Right. Looks pretty her sweet at the moment, but uh, that'll hopefully improve. Right, done the second half now. Just three mil one in. Good. Right, we've done the uh, sec fine run on the back now. Look how we are. Get out. Yeah, it's looking better now. So we just turn it over. Let's see what we have. Okay, just over six hours on the milling machine. We now have a, a blank. Now I've got to drill the hole up the neck. And to do that, I'm going to cut this end off, but leave this, this here end on to uh, so I can hold it in the vise. So uh, do that next. Right, I have a uh, nine and a half mil uh, drill bit. I have my head mounted in the vise at a slight angle so that it's looking slightly forwards. I mark the centre spot. So now all that remains is to drill the hole. It's important that it goes centrally. Concentration. Blue, but it's not a very There's the head neck drilled hole. Oh. His job is to cut the head off and then to carve it. Right, now I've cut the head. I want to put some eye uh, lids in at the top. So I've cut them out of to beech wood, four millimetre thick beech wood, 
And I'm going to stick them in the top first of all. Got to make sure that they fit. And this one's a little bit too wide, so I need to sand it down. This is trial and error here. No, nope, it's still a little bit too wide. Super, that one fits. Right, now glue them in place. Use some uh, PVA glue for this. If it wants to go out. in place now I just need to hold it in place for a while while the glue binds tweezers are quite handy here because there's a little bit of uh, spring to them which holds it in place And the other one, leave that to dry now. While that's drying, I'm going to make the uh, the jaw. To make the jaw, I've cut out a piece of um, lime wood just to fit in the space there. That's a little bit that goes in and connects onto the control rod. So that fits in there. And just holds in place of this dowel for a while. Now how you draw the jaw makes quite a difference to the character of the, of the uh, head. In this case I want quite a young person so we won't put much of a chin on. The bigger the chin the older they look. So a bit further around perhaps Better to make them a little bit bigger than you want. You can always uh, come back to it. Good. So what I'm going to do now is cut that out on the scroll saw, sand it down and then we'll have another look what it looks like. Right, I've cut out the jaw piece and sanded it down now. The next thing that makes quite a difference is how far the jaw goes in to the mouth so you can make quite a difference in the appearance. Let's see if we can focus on that. That's the way you put it so you need to be able to adjust that. So the next thing to do is to uh, finish the head off. I'm going to sand it down and then carve the hair and carve some features. Right, I'm just carving the, the hair in now. I'm finishing the, uh, the head using a Swiss carving tool, very sharp. I 
It was quite tough against the across the grain. Just keep an eye on which way the blade's going in case it slips. It's good not to have your hands in the phallite path. Good, I'll just get on and finish this then and then come back to you. Right, I've marked the hair out for carving, but first of all I'm just going to do the ears using the Proxon with a small grinding bit in the end. Now then, I'll mark the ears out with a pencil and here's the hair and uh, if I can find a v-shaped carving piece I'll start carving again making sure that I don't carve myself Right, making progress with the uh, hair now. I bought this well, six months ago, Proxon uh, PS13 little sanding machine. Not a lot of use, frankly, but there are some things it actually works quite well for. And here I've got some uh, cut marks that are very difficult to get to to sand off, and this gets in there perfectly and just gently sands that down. Really quite effective for doing that. So since that's actually quite difficult to do otherwise and this wasn't that expensive probably money well spent. The problem was that these little sanding pads wear out really quickly so uh, what I've started doing is making my own just with some double-sided tape and then some uh, some of the sort of um, abrasive that you use on plaster so it's uh, quite a lot of space between the little granules and so it doesn't get clogged up. So yeah, right, I'm now going to fit the eyes down in the eye. Box. It's a small pile. Right, some progress I've uh, finished carving the head and I've painted the hair I haven't varnished it yet that'll come next uh, but also now made the mechanism for the jaw uh, the jaw which we made earlier I've now drilled two holes in and they will fit onto the end of this brass tube it's a tube because the control for the eyes goes through it and this jaw will just fit on the end there so what we need to end it will go through the neck piece. So this is the neck that goes through the body and the jaw goes through. So it's a fairly simple job now to thread the brass rod through and then we can put the neck in. Good, so now we have the neck and the head. You're obviously going to have to cut this brass tube down once I decide how long it needs to be. And now the jaw is just a press fit. See if we can get that in. Just presses on and there we have it. Just need to pull that down a little bit. So it's not... 
uh, the eyes will then be fitted in. I've done, a, I've done a previous video on how I make the eyes work, so I won't go into that again, but they're going to fit in there. Brown eyes, black hair. This one's going off to Florida eventually. Um, so good. Hope you enjoyed this part of the video, and now we'll move on to the software side of things. So I'll show you the software that I use now and the workflow I use. Uh, if I'm starting with a completely new head, I usually start off using Play-Doh and just make the basic shape. A, just to give me a guide on the shape, but also on the size. And then I can take profile photographs and use that in the software. I use Play-Doh rather than other types of modeling clay because it's very soft. So I'm not looking for a lot of detail. I'm just looking for the basic shape and just to get the ideas and you can mould this so quickly uh, whereas some of the uh, other ones I've tried are quite hard and you're spending all your time trying to get, push it into shape. Uh, so right, we'll move on to the computer then. I use Blender which uh, is free but it's good form to give a donation. It looks pretty uh, intimidating to start with, you just start with a square box but uh, there's plenty of tutorials and uh, once you get into it it's not too bad but quite often I use one that I've already made and then adapt it and uh, you can just tweak it and pull it about and make quite a lot of changes and that's the easiest uh, way to go about it really here I'm just pulling the forehead up a little you see moving it round you don't need to be so precise because it's going to come out in wood and you can post carve it afterwards uh, just showing here how the neck on this one is a little bit uh, narrow really so uh, in this uh, demonstration I'm just in going to increase the size of the neck so just highlight it and uh, you can actually here I've highlighted all the little points but in fact it makes it quite difficult to get in because you can see it's quite complicated so instead you can highlight all the faces instead and then get to it so there we go, we just catch all those and uh, then we can make it bigger. Good, now we just resize it and uh, you've got a bigger neck. I uh, then move into uh, ZBrush Core, which is a program I have. You can also do this in Blender though. And you can manipulate it like clay, so you just have to import the uh, the STL file that you export from Blender, and then you can push and pull and uh, make the uh, fine details, which would take a long time to do uh, in Blender. So here I'm just shaping the ear a little bit. First of all, just flatten a little bit down where it's sticking up and then we want to uh, just put a bit more detail inside the ear. You can increase the intensity of the brushes and the shape of the brush. And then just build it up a little bit inside. Quite nice once you get the hang of it. Say it looks all very intimidating, but uh, not too bad once you've gone through a couple of tutorials just to get up and running. Once I'm quite happy with that, I uh, then export again to an STL and import that into Vectric Cut 3D, which is the program I use for making the G code for uh, cutting it out on the machine. Here, as you can see, I've got, I've imported it, and then it's a matter of orientating it, and then setting the various tools up to, uh, and then uh, deciding how far down the tool is going to go, decide which tool to use. Uh, you do a rough cut and then a fine cut to uh, cut the 3D file. Here I'm putting the uh, the tabs in that are going to hold it. I'm going to do one at the top and one at the bottom. As you saw, the, the, the top one I use as a fixer when I drill the hole through the neck. Then we calculate the, uh, the cutting path and it tells you how long it's going to take. And then we can do a test 
on the machine just to see what it's going to look like quite important because quite often you find that you've actually gone outside the limits or something and it's just a bit of a safety check better to find it out on the computer than on the machine once you start cutting so here you see the rough cut being made and then following that the the, uh, the second finer cut which goes to up 45 degrees and there we have uh, the head So I save that and then I import it into Vectric VCarve Pro. I could just print it straight from Cut 3D, but in VCarve Pro I can put some 2D cuts in as well. Uh, for instance, for the eyes to make sure they're, they're the right size and also the back of the head to get the, uh, the cavity there the right size. Again, do a test run both sides. It's quite nice this program because you can just see whether the 2D cuts actually do fit in with the 3D spaces and how also to make sure the depths of those cuts are correct. A little bit of an aberration on this one, but uh, it doesn't come out on the actual cut. Now doing the back side of it, the rough cut, it's fairly expensive VCAR Pro but there is a cheaper version if you have a small machine and this one would quite e you could quite easily do with the cheaper version. And there we are, that's what it's going to look like when it's cut out and as you saw earlier in the video that's what it did look like when it was cut out. Good, you made it to the end. Thank you for hanging around. Uh, if you like this video, please do subscribe, like and comment. It really helps me to uh, get more sh showings of the video. And uh, So yeah, thank you and uh, hopefully you'll come along for the next one. Bye bye.